time I haven't posted anything and guess what I had just finished recording a video about this and my phone fell on the floor and somehow I just lost the video so it's been a long time I haven't posted any videos and I just want to give you an update uh, on the progress on the new mini computer so here is the control board for the mini computer and it's built on wire up boards and here is the card cage so this computer uh, is going to be built on this card cage and so you have the wire up boards here at the back you have we have a back plane so the external bus is like the data bus uh, address bus control bus external to the computer to the CPU is always going to happen here at the back plane and these connectors here at the front are for the cars to communicate with each other so I will I will either at the beginning at least I will connect uh, IDC cables like this uh, between the cards for them to communicate and then probably after I want to replace this with a, another plane another let's say a front plane here so a PCB with the connectors which can be easily removed and so this PCB can also come out and we can put it in to connect the cards also wire wrapped and then at the front here I'm going to build a panel uh, so this panel is going to be the front panel uh, with switches and LEDs to show the internal states of the computer for example data bus, address bus uh, values of the internal registers I really wanted, what I really wanted to do was to show all the control bits of the CPU on the front panel as you can see here you have a few ROMs here so each ROM is basically 8 bits of the control board so all these bits are going to come out of this control board through these cables into the other cards to control the rest of the cards so for this CPU basically we're going to have the control card uh, I'm going to put the rest so this is the control sequencer the sequencer right now and we have some space left here which I'm going to use for some of the ALU stuff and so the result from the ALU is going to come out from this uh, and go, is going to go into another card which will uh, keep the registers, all of the other registers so the value of these registers is also going to be sent out from there from that card through this into the control board and so they will communicate like this now as for the architecture of this uh, mini computer so yes it's a mini computer it's called a mini computer not a microcomputer because it's not a CPU on a chip so it's a mini computer because the CPU is built from 74 series logic on uh, on wire up boards like this so the whole CPU is spread between these wire up cards so it's a mini computer like they used to make back in the day so I have some coffee here Mm, very good. Here's the schematic for the uh, for this stuff. I'm still making some changes. I'm gonna talk to you about the schematics uh, later. So, as for the architecture of this machine, basically it's uh, it it was it used used to be 16 bits, but uh, it was going to take a long time to build. So I decided to downgrade it to 8 bits again just so I can uh, build it faster uh, just so I, I want to test everything if my new design works uh, I don't like to do simulation like very long uh, I like to design the whole thing on paper and on, in my mind and use my brain and then I like to build it and test it so I want to test this design to see if everything works fine and then if it does, when it does I will upgrade the machine to 16 bits again so now it's a 16-bit machine with four general purpose registers A, B, C, and D. We have a stack pointer which is 16 bits. Program counter is also 16 bits. The stack uh, base, uh, the base pointer for the stack frames is also 16 bits. We have like the Intel X, x86. We have the source and destination index registers, which are used to do memory operations. For example, array transfers, uh, memory transfers uh, in a machine. Uh, and so also this computer has uh, eight external interrupts so the the mini computer can be the CPU can be interrupted in between instructions uh, and so there are eight interrupts four of these are edge edge uh, type interrupts 
and uh, the other four are level. Also, it has DMA. Okay, so sorry, I was interrupted here, so I had to pause the video. So yeah, so we have the eight interrupts, and we have DMA. So DMA is used uh, to stop the CPU, uh, try state the the external buses uh, that is put them in high impedance mode. So the address, data, and control buses uh, become uh, high impedance. What for? For the other devices uh, to take control of the bus. In this case, this is uh, the, the purpose of this is just so we can access uh, the CPU and the memory via the front panel. So we can put the CPU on hold and then we can look at the internal state of the CPU. Uh, I had this idea of course from uh, my friend Bill Busby which is just, just a great guy and uh, uh, this is uh, where I got the idea from. So the DMA is from the front panel. We can stop the machine, put it on DMA, uh, that puts the machine into a, an, an internal loop and the buses become high impedance so we can have a look at the, the bus at the buses the memory for example the devices with the front panel switches and LEDs so I think as far as the machine go that's basically it uh, yeah there is going to be a front panel display here so a piece of aluminium aluminium perhaps here uh, with some LEDs to show the state of the, the machine and switches to access memory, uh, data bus, address bus, uh, clock, DMA request uh, and things like that. This, this, uh, I, what I wanted to do also was to show on the front panel all of the control bits for the CPU. Uh, so, for example, uh, these ROMs here, they are the, they form the control word, which dictates what's going to happen inside the the machine on the next uh, rising edge of the clock. I, it would be, however, a lot of work because I would have to uh, bring wires from each of these ROMs here, somewhere here, and then outside of this board into the front panel, so I can show uh, the state. However, if I bring long wires from here outside, that's going to create reflections and slow down the, the CPU. Unless I can put two 4 4 buffers right here as close as possible to the ROMs to avoid reflections. Uh, however, as you can see, the board is quite populated. So even if I put the two 4 4s here, still going to create some long wires, but not as long. The main problem is that it's going to take a lot of space from this board. About this much space to do just that. So I'm not sure if I'm going to do that. So I think that's it for now. I just wanted to show you that uh, I have been working on this. And this machine is going to be very exciting. I, I plan to connect it to the internet in the future. Uh, again, just like uh, my friend Bill Busby. And so I would like to connect this machine to the internet. Probably not this one, probably the next one, the 16-bit one. So people can come and log in and leave messages and play games, etc. So I'll cut this video right now because it's uh, already 9 minutes long. And so I will uh, make uh, more videos uh, as soon as I can. And thank you very much for watching.